whole lot of business for a private investigator in a small liberal arts college like this one. Most of my work comes from jealous dames or the occasional missing item search in the DC. Never anything big. I was just wrapping up my previous case when there came a knock at the door. Come in. Are you Charles Blackson, Private Eye? What does it say on the door? It doesn't. Oh. Yes, that's me. Maybe of service? Don't you remember me? I didn't think you'd come here to reminisce about old times. Perhaps you want me to track down your latest sweetheart, is that it? Maybe you think he's cheating on you? Well, whatever it is, I want no part of it. If it involves you, I'm out, because you are trouble. Charles, you don't understand. Understand? I understand, all right. I understand when a twist like you is on the level when you ain't. Why don't you scram out now while the going's good, like you did last time? All right, I admit it. I ran you around. But this is important. More important than honor, decency? Charles, this is more important than either of us. The future of the college is at stake. This is no time to exaggerate, Blanche. I'm not exaggerating, Charles. I'm talking about a student missing, possibly dead. Think of what the press would do if they got a hold of this. Think of the complete silence about this from the higher powers. This is a massive cover-up. This is the climax of your career. Not some simple matter of Mr. Green in the hallway with a revolver. All right, take your case, but I want it understood that I want you around as little as possible, mind, and I get all the credit. Understand? Good. Now, we need to discuss the details, but not here. Let's go somewhere a little more private. By the way, what case were you working on before I came in? Small time operation, you know. Uh, Mr. Green with the revolver in the hall? More or less. Where are we going? The study. Up to you. Ever since the semester started, my friend... Name? Mike Bennett. He seemed preoccupied. About two weeks ago, he told me that he'd be leaving for a few days. A week at the most. But whatever happened, I was to keep quiet and not tell anybody. And you're worried now he might be in over his head. If you knew Mike, you'd understand. He would be in over his head before he even vanished. I'm just worried because he's just not cut out for the trouble. Hmm. What kind of trouble? I don't know. Some sort of shady dealings. All I know is that if all went as planned, it would affect the entire campus, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I could, like, pass out. Like, you Do you know anything else about him leaving? Where he was going, who he was meeting, anything? No, nothing. Except... What? Well, I overheard him talking with his roommate about something that he's lost and is looking for. I didn't think it was anything at the time, but now... Well, I, I guess that's about it. I hope you don't mind if I don't escort you back to your room. I should probably get on these leads before the case gets any colder. Then again, two weeks is far too long to hope for any good leads. I'll find him. Don't worry. Blackson's on the case. Hello? Listen, 
I need you to look up anything you can on a Mike Bennett. Room number, class schedule, everything. Got it? Braxton, do you have any idea what time it is? Did you write that down? Bennett, room, classes, everything. Anything else while I'm up? Yeah, be on the lookout for anything big that might have gone missing. Like what? I don't know, a grand for 75 mil? Something. Got it. Hey, any idea when you might be getting around to paying me? Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. I want my kids to know that it's not their job to live out my dreams for them, but to find their own dreams. And whatever they choose, to know that I'll be with them and behind them and supporting them in their dreams. Let this final step be a okay. sacrifice. I've looked up in this class schedule and made a copy of it here. I also looked up his room, his roommate, and his roommate's class schedule. Living well. Any overlapping classes? Uh, just one. Yeah. College quarter. Meets tonight in Dean Chapel at 8. It's all in my court. Hmm. And Mike Bennett's a roommate named Mike Barrett. It's all stand. No yeah, chances of that. No kidding. I thought it was a mistake. Your body? Funny sense of Alright, well, I will pay you for your services at the end of this week, so stay in your phone. People do it. Hey now, I have some debts mounting up, and you know my regular job doesn't pay enough. But I will pay you at the end of the week. Loud chair, sacred and profane. Interesting light reading. Oh, oh my, you scared me. Sorry, I was looking for Mike. Oh, well that makes the two of us. <laughs> If that boy expects me to stick around, he should tell me where he goes before he disappears like this. Even his roommate has been gone for two weeks. Two weeks? Why, if I weren't so trusting, I'd hire someone to spy on him. But he wouldn't like that. Not one bit. Hmm. Well, I must be getting ready for dinner, so I will see you later. Well, if you need any information on those two silly, silly boys, you'll let me know, won't you? Yes, well, nice meeting you, Tata. Oh. <laughs> um, that's not my room. <laughs>
Greetings and peace be upon you. And, and also upon your family. Let us sing. God sacred, the most marvelous chair, the Adam's chair, but they have determined, beyond a doubt, that the final resting place to be of certainty somewhere on this campus, hidden by our great benefactress, Mrs. Kerr, long before this college came known throughout the world of academia as the touchstone of Christian liberal arts. Our greatness not diminished by our limited size. She prepared before the music department had become what it is. She prepared for the day when we would have an endowed chair of music by keeping the secret of that sacred chair until the time when the one worthy to sit in it would appear. Even the piece of the true chair, which I obtained with such great difficulty, has given me such great musical talent, sliver though it is. And even though this mere sliver has bestowed such power, how much more will the complete chair endow me with powers beyond imagining, for the glory of Westmont, for the glory of music. Ah! I come before you to show you but a sample of the great plan to expand Westmont and through the power of the chair to raise to the pinnacle of mankind's achievement. Gentlemen, I give you the university town of Westmont. First step will be to use the influence of the chair to add unto Westmont the whole of Montecito and the arches to the music academy. All this will become useful in time of the extended will be extended into the music conservatories, providing the best musicians to the whole of the world, and then we will have them under our thumbs. All the nations of the earth will be led by me. Enthusiasm for the future of the earth. You were right, of course. She's hired some flat foot of a detective to investigate the matter. You were right. She can't be trusted. 
She never cared about me. She's getting dangerous. Send the message. Only, don't hurt her. For my sake. I need you to dig up any information you can on the Westmont and Dowd shares, especially the Adams share, and quickly. When can you have the information ready? You mean before our normal meeting time? I mean tomorrow morning is later than I'd like. I need to know about those shares and what makes them so special. How come you don't ever do your own dirty work? You could open a book every now and again. Book? You know, a bunch of pages, a binding. They gather them in these places called libraries? Thanks. The rest can wait until tomorrow morning. I'll be outside my door, early. And if I like what you bring me, then you'll get your pay then. In the meantime, I have some reading to do. Oh, you didn't really give me much notes. Well, what does it say? Oh, no, you don't. Money first this time. All right, I have the money. Now give me the paper. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that, Charles. <laughs> Get out of my way. You see, Felix has been teaching me cello on the side. And I don't want the music department to think that I lack loyalty. So, when Schausberger called me, just... Ready for this? I need to stow this truck. She's a man to light. Just quit griping and put her in that chair. Uh, gag her or something? Nuts to that. Just tie her up and be quick about it. We'll deal with her later.
What the? Where did you find that? Lunch? Endowed Chairs of Westmont. Adam, Row, Gumbry, Smith, Fletcher Jones. You know of them? What sort of detective do you take me for? Of course I know of them. I can even tell you the name of one, though. The whole cult behind it is a bunch of hocus pocus, if you ask me. I read a whole newspaper article and a book on it, as a matter of fact. Now, Fletcher Jones is that one right there. How can you tell? says, right here, Fletcher Jones will be the first and only rotating chair at Westmont. Since this is the only rotating chair in the room, we must assume that it's Fletcher Jones. I could figure out the rest through deduction, but... Then I insist that you begin deducing right away. Hello, Blanche. Charles Blacks and I presume. Would you be so kind as to commence with the deducing? None of us wants to stay down here longer than we have to. And we're not leaving until I have that chair. Charles, don't listen to him! I'm afraid I don't have a whole lot of choice at the moment. Excellent. We can carry on. There. Is that it? The Adams chair? No. That's Gundry. Early 20th century. Definitely not carved by Jabal from the wood that Adam brought from Eden. Such is the legend. The Adam's chair. The chair among chairs. The chair that gives you the gift of music. Which of the three is it? I don't know. There's no way to tell. It could be any of them. Unless be. Which one is it? Get back! All oh. of you! The chair is mine! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Philosophy, I think. That would make that the Monroe chair. Then that solves it. Blackson, you sing? No. Tone deaf, as I recall. That's a shame. Well then, sit in one of the two remaining chairs. If you choose wisely, you'll be healed. Otherwise, you'll become a chemist. Good luck. Blackson, you must choose. I guess there's only one way to find out. Charles, what is it? Charles, what is it? 
sing to me in the marriage of Figaro. Se vol ballare, signor Contino, se vol ballare, signor Contino, il chitarino le suonerò, il chitarino le suonerò, sì, le suonerò, sì, le suonerò. On me. Wanna bet? Move. <laughs> but the physical world is only a small part of our existence. I never had been before. Ready for life or death with a half smile. Ready for... Come in. Charles? Ah, oh, it's you. I want to apologize, have we? Apologize? For your damn stupid idea that just about got me mugged, crushed, and shot. Not to mention costing me a fair amount of expenses. Oh, right. Well, wasn't it worth it? Oh, sure. I mean, when else do you almost get to die looking for some missing patsy who actually isn't lost, only to suddenly find out that you have to save the world from a bunch of short musicians? I knew you were trouble the moment you walked through that door. Guess I should listen to my own head more often. Probably live longer that way. Well, come along, sweetheart. I haven't got all night. No, these notes waiting for me. Where are we going this time? Oh, just taking the air. I have some unsettled business with you. I guess the entrance to the tunnel is a complete write-off. I checked it earlier, and the only way you're getting in there now is with heavy machinery. Not even Shawsburg can pull that one off. So, the chair's safe? Oh, perfectly. Although, even if it wasn't buried, I don't know that it would do him a whole lot of good. No, would it? What? I did a bit of reading on the chair, and it only grants the powers once per generation, at least as far as I can tell. Bach, Mozart, Schumann, and so on. About a hundred years ago, the chair went missing. And then was found shortly after World War II by a cousin of Ruth Kerr, who was stationed in Germany at the time, and who brought the chair back with her. Now, it wouldn't have done Schausberger any good at all to sit in that chair. Especially not after it had already endowed me with its gifts. What I really want to know is this. Did you really mean what you said? Before Westmont, before the chairs? Or were those just more lies, like the ones you told me about Bennett two nights ago in the study? I... I... You were never Bennett's dame. My informant told me all about Barrett's girl, the one that I ran into while I was snooping around. There was nothing in the file on you. Sure, Bennett liked you, and you used that fact to your advantage. Same old story, I guess. Find someone who will do anything for you and exploit them. You used me to try and stop Shawsberger from getting his hands on that chair. But everything went wrong. Your thinking was clouded by the chloroform. But you remembered a place to hide where no one else would think to look. The same place that Kerr hid the chair all those years ago. 
At least, it's the only way it makes sense to me. What I can't understand is why you didn't take the power of the chair for yourself. And why you seem to consider yourself the chair's protector. Tell me the truth, Blanche, for once. You don't understand. You're right. The power of the chair is generational. But there's more. The chair won't choose a direct descendant of someone who's already received its gift. I couldn't have taken the power of the chair for myself. It wasn't mine to have. But the chair went missing over a hundred years ago, and you're not German. Unless... Ruth Kerr was my great aunt. You don't know what it's like trying to live up to that reputation. I wanted to go anywhere other than Westmont, but my parents wouldn't hear of it. My entire life I've been raised knowing that the chair must be protected and that I was to keep it safe. My father told me that I could have no close friends, no one that I might tell my secret to, no one that might betray my trust. I could live a life alone. That wasn't a problem. Not until I met someone who wouldn't be brushed off. I panicked. I knew that if my parents found out, that my life would become impossible. I'm sorry. I know it was wrong. I knew it then. But I couldn't explain things to you, and I had to get you to stop liking me fast. So I came up with a plan to get you to stop liking me. So that you wouldn't be able to stand the sight of me. I'm sorry, Charles. Can you ever forgive me? Please. Ow. It's all right. I'm here. There's no need to cry. I had to do it, Charles. There was no choice. I still loved you. I know. I understand. I... I think I still loved you, too. Even though the thought of it made me angry and bitter all over again. Perhaps... Perhaps we can still make it work. Perhaps. No. At least, not yet. I still love you, Blanche. But I can't be around you for a while without ruining it. I need to rebuild myself first. And besides, with all the music lessons I'm gonna be taking soon, I don't know that I'll have much time for fun. Chosberger has been extremely gracious, and he's basically taken on the attitude of whatever happens in the Secret Underground Crypt stays in the Secret Underground Crypt. <laughs> so one thing's led to another, and I've decided to major in music. Though I haven't decided between performance or composition yet. Who knows? Maybe I'll do both. Come on now, cheer up. Not all's lost. Maybe a few years down the road we can actually look each other in the face with that little hood of guilt hanging over our heads. Anyhow, it's time that we part paths. I have my case notes to write, and you should probably go get some rest. Do stop by if you have any more cases, and uh, keep the handkerchief. Goodbye, Charles. And thank you for everything. Oh, not at all. It's all part of the services at Plaxton's Detective Agency. Handkerchiefs, absolution, saving the world. All free of charge, of course. Oh, wait! Are you sure I don't owe you any money? I did hire you, after all. Yes, about that. Next time you come to me with an adventure, please don't try to pass it off as a mystery. It makes clues very hard to find. Good night, Blanche.